Hi there, Stephanie here. This is the second video that I am creating to help encourage all of you really enthusiastic teachers who want to move away from sort of uh, balanced literacy approaches to reading instruction and move towards implementing what we know in the science of reading. So before you engage in perhaps extensive PD, which I hope you'll do, um, before you adopt or implement any different instructional curriculum or program, this series of videos is focused on what you could start right away today. So um, in this video, I wanna focus on a topic that you've probably been reading about and hearing about, and that is how to teach high-frequency words. What even is a high-frequency word? Probably about 15 years ago, Linda Farrell introduced me to this concept of a new way to teach high frequency words. And I'll put a link in the comments to her documents about that topic uh, where you can learn a little bit more. So this is a brief um, introduction to this idea. So what we know from the reading research is that it's really effective for students to be able to recognize words instantly so that their brain can be freed up to focus on the meaning of what they're reading. And to get students to that level of instant and automatic word recognition, it's helpful to connect the sound in the pronunciation of the words to the written string of letters on the page and even to the meaning of the word. That helps to really build those circuits in students' brains. So here are four things you can do right away to make a change in the way that you're teaching high frequency words. So first of all, make a list of the words that the students in your grade are expected to read. Get a, get a full list of what they're expected to be able to read by the end of the year. And group that list in three categories. Words that are perfectly regular in their sound symbol relationships, words that are less regular in that sound symbol correspondence, and words that have patterns that aren't taught in your grade level, that haven't been taught in prior grade levels, that haven't been taught yet. That's the way you wanna think about it. And then take that list within those three categories and organize the words by patterns. So uh, you might have words like be, he, me, she, we. Group those together by pattern. And then the next two suggestions kind of go together. So um, number three would be to integrate those words in the regular category, regular sound symbol relationships, integrate those into your phonics instruction. Think about the phonics instruction across the school year for your grade level and plug in the words that have that pattern into your regular phonics instruction. And as much as possible when you're teaching phonics, try to really emphasize that sound symbol relationship. You can do that with Elkonin boxes, with sound box strips, starting by students tapping the sounds in words and then using the letters that represent those sounds. And as much as you can, integrate the less regular words into that phonics sequence as well. And then sort of related to that, number four would be as you are um, engaging students in reading text, look at the words in that story. And if there are any of the high frequency words on your grade level list, pre-teach those before students read that story. So even if you're in a district that insists that you use leveled readers, you can start with this approach, just paying more attention to the patterns and words, uh, thinking about organizing them and integrating them into your phonics instruction, and also um, pre-teaching the words that are going to appear in the stories that your students are reading. So this is a, a new approach, perhaps for many of you, or a different way of thinking about high frequency words that goes beyond just simply rote memorization of the words and really recognizes that on lists that are commonly used, like the Dolch list, upwards of 60% of those words are perfectly regular and decodable. So let's take advantage of that when we're teaching our students.